and welcome to another presentation from STI Electronics. Today we are presenting Hot Tips Number 4, Stress Relief and Leadless Parts. Stress relief allows for items to move or give during expansion and contraction and shock and vibration and dissipate mechanical stresses in a controlled manner. A common failure for electronic components is the solder connection itself. It will often develop fractures that will lead to intermittent and complete electrical failure. The best way to reduce the occurrence of this failure mechanism is to provide a flexible portion that will reduce the amount of stress being applied to the solder connection. In the past, when leaded through-hole components were prevalent, this was easily accomplished through the use of stress relief bends. This became more challenging with the introduction of surface mount components. With leadless surface mount components such as chip resistors, there is no provision for stress relief. The solder itself provides what little stress relief there is. In the F revision, of the IPC J Standard 001, Clause 7.4 states, surface mounted device leads or components shall not be pressed down against the PCB LAN or other mating surface during the soldering operation or during solder solidification. Clause 7.5.2 goes further stating, dimension G which is the solder thickness, is the prime parameter in the determination of solder connection reliability for leadless components. A thick G is desirable. In the absence of stress relief bends, the solder will provide the stress relief. A taller or increased thickness of solder will allow the solder to slowly deform providing some degree of stress relief. This clause doesn't really apply to the automated SMT process because most of the component placement equipment is programmed to lightly place the component into the solder paste deposits. Hand soldering is another story. Previously, we used what was called the solder bump method to hand solder rectangular chip style components. Because this method required the hold down of the component during the soldering process, it no longer meets the requirements of the F revision of J standard 001. Many different methods can be used for hand soldering components with a soldering iron. However, there is still a good chance that some downward pressure may be applied. A surefire way to accomplish the hand soldering without any downward pressure is through the use of hot air. Let's take a step-by-step -step look at the hot air soldering process. First, we need to apply solder bumps to both lands on the board. After cleaning, we'll apply some flux. Tacky flux will work the best for holding the component in place. Now we'll carefully place the component on top of the solder bumps placed as accurately as possible. Using a hot air pencil tip, direct the hot air flow straight down. Be careful not to aim it from the side. We'll start at a distance and slowly bring the tip in closer until solder melt is observed. Once solder melt is achieved, allow sufficient time for the solder to flow and wet the metalized surfaces. Then slowly withdraw the hot air heat source and allow the connections to cool back down to room temperature. Clean the flux residue if required. Let's compare a chip component soldered using the traditional method of pressing down while using a soldering iron and the chip component that was soldered using hot air. It is easy to see that the hot air method provides a much greater solder thickness, dimension G, than the soldering iron method, which should, in turn, provide greater long-term reliability.
Keep in mind that the J-Standard 001 requirement concerning hold down only applies to Class 3 products. Will your device continue to function normally in most ordinary end-use environments? Probably. This requirement will definitely enhance long-term reliability in harsh end-use environments. It may be time to put those wood sticks and soldering aids back in the drawer. This is the end of Hot Tips number 4. You should now have an understanding of the effects of solder thickness on leadless surface mount components and how to manually solder leadless surface mount components so that the resulting solder connections will provide greater long-term reliability. Be sure to contact any of our training staff if you have a question you would like to see answered in a Hot Tips video. Make sure you check YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn or Twitter for the next phenomenal episode of We hope this brief video gives you some idea of our capabilities in the training department. Whether you need customized training, industry certification, online training, training at our facility or yours, we can do it. STI. This is the training you deserve.